Hi, and uh, welcome to the Video Zone. I'm Charles Band, and I think this is about the 40th Video Zone I've done for Full Moon. I hope you've enjoyed uh, another bizarre feature. This one was shot in Romania at our studio there. And again, I guess you see behind me the, uh, the Blood Dolls, which uh, you know, I'm excited about the fact that this feature, Blood Dolls, is coming out in August, so it will be shortly after Witch House is available. And it's the first film in a while that I've directed. And, um, you know, it's exciting because the cast was terrific. I think we have some wonderful new actors we've uh, hopefully have helped uh, introduce for the first time in leading roles. The, uh, the blood dolls, the actual um, characters, puppets are very cool. And they're going to be action figures out later this year for the three blood dolls. I'm especially fond of the pimp doll, which is um, pretty, pretty weird, I must say. And uh, yeah, there are a lot of good movies uh, in the can. We have Retro Puppet Master coming out a little later this year. And uh, we have a show that we're working on called Fear.com. We're currently in production on The Dead Hate the Living. And um, I hope in the year 2000, we'll be able to release a high quality, uh, full moon, straight horror film every single month. Uh, of course, we have Subspecies uh, now in the works, Subspecies 5. I'm not sure what the title will be, but it's really the backstory of Radu. And, and it really begins in the year 1000 AD to the present. So for all subspecies fans, it should be a lot of fun. And uh, I'm hoping to do another Trancers film with Tim Thomerson. So uh, for all of you who've been watching these video zones and enjoy our films, uh, thank you for being here, and I'll see you on the next edition. Full Moon Pictures invites you to a house party. So come on in, grab yourself a drink, have a smoke, play a game, and scream. <coughs> Gather around to hear the cast and crew tell their tales of mayhem. And bring you one step closer to horror. Witch House. Oh, our lovely hostess. Woo! Oh, you go, girl. Whoa, is this a costume party or what? No, I just threw this old thing on. But I'm sure you'll discover that it sort of fits the theme of my little party. Okay, she pretends to be friends with these fellow college students, and she invites them over, and her, her little scheme is to, to kill them all, to get revenge for her family, because um, her, the ancestors of these other college students killed Lilith. Silence, witch! Thou hast been accused of the crime of witchcraft. We, the goodly servants of the Lord, the elders of the township of Dunwich, sentenced thee, Lilith of Fay, to be burned at the stake and condemned to eternal damnation. Lilith is this witch who was burned at the stake. Um, she wants to come back and get revenge on the people that wronged her. And um, one of her ancestors, Elizabeth, brings her back from hell. So she's basically just an instrument of evil to kill everybody. Give me the power. We set the stage for the rest of the movie. We kind of, it was kind of like a preamble of what was about to happen, set up the circumstances, and we were killed off early, but it kind of showed who was doing the killing, what was going on. I mean, look at this. This is going to be a blast. We're partying down at the old haunted house. My character, she does get to be kind of mysterious. Um, and how it has a history to it. I think it's real important to keep the history to it because there was the witches and the goblins or demons or whatever you want to call them way back yonder. And then later on in the future it comes back and basically it has, it's a story. It's another story. You know, they say the original LaFay family had this mansion shipped brick by brick, slab by stone slab to Massachusetts from their state and friends back in the early 1600s. Oh shit. Why would they want to do something like that? 
Well, I suspect Elizabeth's ancestors came to the New World for the same reason the Pilgrims did, to escape religious persecution. Jack's a, he's kind of a quiet type. He's, uh, he's very uh, thoughtful, he's a listener, an observer, um, uh, very interesting in that way. You do get to see a lot more of him, but I think that uh, he's, he changes in the course of the script, which is nice, but he's a, a thoughtful guy. And uh, I think that's where he gets his intelligence from. He's not so much a book smart guy, but he's smart in his listening abilities. Handedness. What's handedness? Well, it's uh, not a football term. <laughs> <laughs> it refers to the left hand and all the superstition that surrounds it. Many cultures believe the left hand is a symbol of evil and that left handed people are servants of the devil. That kind of thing. Sounds pretty messed up to me. She goes to a party with her boyfriend, and she, she really likes this guy. She's a little possessive about him. Uh, they kind of tend to wander away from the party at some point during the evening to go upstairs. And while they're upstairs, some interesting things happen to them. And they change. They get turned into demons. And then they begin terrorizing the other guests at the party. My favorite aspect of it was that I get to turn into a demon. Uh, you know, for me, it's the first time I had the chance to get into something a bit evil. And, uh, for me, that was a lot of fun. So. It's your destiny, Maria Darrow. You pay for the past. They never really explained the the uh, the reason for why some demons were demons and some demons were not. Um, you know who who was picked by the um, by the evil to be demons and who was cast aside. Um, it never really dawned on me, of course, until we got there um, and I started seeing the special effects being done, the makeup, um, that I was being excluded. You're not joining us. You know what? I think I'm just going to stand over here and, and watch. Seances aren't my thing. It it didn't bother me much uh, after that because. We had the scene, um, the night shoot, the night exterior on the cross. Um, so that was my special scene, if you will. So I, I took that uh, as my special effects, and uh, I went away with that. Somebody wake me up! When I ripped my face off at the burning at the stake, I didn't actually rip my face off. I just, you know, put my hand up to my face and then jerked it down so that they could get a shot of my hand jerking down, but I didn't actually have the, the special effects makeup. That was actually a, a dummy, I think. There was, the one of the grips that were there had to actually do the knife raising. So instead of envisioning her actually coming to kill us or actually seeing her visually doing it, you know, it was more like we were just watching someone else do it. We never got a chance to actually, you know, meet up with her on that. Oh my god! Stop! I get to be a demon, so I, I spent four hours getting into makeup, which was fun. It was a little bit cold. The spray paint was really, really cold. We started with contact lenses, which were black and the worst for me, that was the worst part of the makeup for me because I really don't like anything <laughs> around my eyes. Even before all the makeup was on, looking in the mirror and with the contacts and you've got black eyes and you know your eyes really define who you are so it's like that right there was like a whole nother person, just the contacts alone. And then basically we put an appliance like from here to here and brought out my brow a little more and um, put a lot of makeup over top of that to blend it in. and. Um, finished it with airbrushing, which was, eh, it was probably the second worst of the process because you have to hold your breath, you don't want to breathe in, breathe in the fumes. And she turned around and I looked at her, immediately I had this turning in my stomach and I was just like, oh my god, knowing of course that I've got to kiss her and she's got these teeth in. That and I've got this nasty tasting like food coloring in my mouth and everything's black. And Gross. Because all I can feel is these teeth, these fake teeth, sticking into my lips and sticking into my mouth. And we filmed the most horrific kissing scenes in all film history. Who are you? I'm your dad. 
destiny, Brad Payton. I told your ancestors I would return. And I have. And I've waited oh so very long. For your kiss. The head ripping off was very interesting. Don't lose your head. Um, we actually, the actor who had his head ripped off, when I did that scene, he wasn't there. We had the, the, the dummy person with the head that was already able to come off, and they, they put a blood pipe through it, so when the head, when we pulled the head off, the blood would be pumped through and spray everywhere. And I felt so bad for the guy wearing it because he was drenched in blood. I felt sorry for Marissa also because the director held a Hudson sprayer full of blood and just sprayed it in her face. He sprayed it directly on me, up and down. And I'm sitting there and I'm trying to look evil and there's blood in my eyes and this blood has soap in it. So I'm starting to get tears coming down my face while I'm screaming and laughing and, and it was, that was interesting. Just being sprayed and covered with blood and, and I almost froze. I'm going, what am I doing? And we could only do the take once. Well, the thing that I noticed right away is, is the sets were just amazing. The, the dungeons that we were in, the, uh, the whole entire ho the witch house per se, Everything was done so well, it was really, you were walking into a dungeon. You know, you're walking into these scenes and it was so lifelike. From little skeletons on the side to, to cobwebs to, everything was exactly like a dungeon, which was, we thought, very, 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 very well done. The setting itself, uh, being in Romania, it just added that much more mystery to the film. Um, when we, we, we do these kind of spooky scenes or, or more uh, uh, scary, you know, scenes that were, revolving around the supernatural, um, we'd then walk off set and go outside and we'd be in the middle of Romania. Uh, the mood was very, you know, very much uh, subdued and really into the evil part. Because we were on location, when we went back to the hotel after shooting all day, we were all still together, so it's like going to work 24 hours a day. You were with the entire cast the whole time, and everyone's talking about the film all day long, you know. So, I think the worth, work ethic and the concentration on the film was greatly increased by being on location, because we didn't, we didn't worry about things that were going on at home. Being here, being removed from our daily lives, and, and uh, I think that really, really helped. That won't help you for long, Jackie. You know that, don't you? I hate horror films. <laughs> they scare me. They scare me to death. I, I'm not good at watching horror films. I really get freaked out. Like, the Sean really did a number on me. I'm so scared. <laughs> I think horror movies, in general, they work, you know, you have, they're very cliched. You know, a lot of cheese in a horror movie. Um, you know, you watch a horror movie, you know a lot of people are going to die. Making horror movies for me is like a childhood dream because I was literally, from the day I was brought out of the hospital every weekend, my mother, as sick as she is, <laughs> used to drag me to the drive-in to watch horror films. I was the only one that would watch them with her. So this little kid, I mean, all through growing up, the nightmares I had. <laughs> Be careful what you ask for. You just might get it. Oh, there better be a witch house too. I mean, you can resurrect, I don't care how many ways you kill a villain, it can always be resurrected. <laughs> I want to play Lilith again. Now come on in and experience the terror of the witch house, if you dare. The idea came from my thesis film, um, which was called The Spider Will Kill You. And it was about um, a blind man who lived in the attic of a, of a noble theater where there were a bunch of mannequins. I saw these mannequins at J.C. Penney's that were the strangest mannequins I'd ever seen. Some really great designer had sold the, the J.C. Penney chain on these mannequins and they the, 
if, as you went through the store, you looked at these mannequins and the children mannequins um, were missing features. So you would have a nose and a mouth and, and maybe one eye would be covered over. Just, there would just be no eye or maybe no two eyes would be gone. And as the, as the mannequins went to more adolescent sizes and then up to adults, by the time they were adults, they had no features at all. The mouth was gone, the nose was gone, the eyes were gone. It was very stylish, but very bizarre. <laughs> So, you know, there, there are a lot of different levels of, of the mannequins coming alive. And it, it sort of came from that, those mannequins I saw at J.C. JCPenney. Um, some mannequins, we had just the eyes move. And so we'd have to, you know, Bob would create these mannequins, put glass eyes in there, and it, you would think that they were real mannequins, and then you'd see the eyes move. And then, then we would have mouths that drop open. And, um, we, we had, uh, the, you get to the point where the mannequin actually comes alive and it's a person. One of my favorite effects in the movie is when the Jerry character comes into the room at the end and we think he's coming to the rescue and, and Chuck Connors laughs at him and grabs his arm and takes off the mannequin arm and, and Jerry looks at this mannequin stub and uh, then he takes his head and, and he's a mannequin. So um, anyway, it took, a, it took a lot of work and Bob did a lot of different kinds of, of, of mannequin effects, mechanical effects. opening of Tourist Trap when Woody goes into the gas station and there's the back room scene where um, everything starts flying out of the cabinet. When I was talking with the special effects people, you know, we were saying, how do we, you know, how do we do it? How, you know, and they were saying, well, you do it with wires and, you know, you just have to do it one at a time and, you know, it'll take a long time. It'll take three or four days. And, and at some point, um, uh, the idea came that we could just build the room on its end and using gravity uh, put the camera down here and have everything dropping towards towards camera or the camera to the sideways where everything's dropping um, and it was very effective <laughs> He worked really hard because he was at the point in his career where he kind of wanted to make the transition uh, into, uh, he wanted to be a, the Boris Karloff of, of this, of the 80s. And he was hoping that um, he could do a film like Tourist Trap and it would be a breakout movie and, and he could have a career as, as a, a horror film star. Um, he had a, he had a you know a, a good career, but he was getting older. And, um, so he worked really hard, and I thought he did a really good job. Jesus, come on, you guys. Um, I remember her agent said, "You've got to see Tanya Roberts. She's she's gorgeous, and she's going to be a star." And we met her, and she was just stunning and she became a star. It came after, uh, right after Halloween. Well, the first thing that happened was we got a, um, a PG rating, which I could not believe um, we were we were making an R movie, and um, I wouldn't let my son see it because 
I thought it was much too violent and grisly for a little kid. Um, and we got this PG rating, which, which killed us. Um, because people who go to see horror movies don't go to see a PG horror movie. They want to see an R or a hard R. You know, people started talking about it here. And, and uh, Stephen King, in his book, Dance, Mac Dance Macabre, uh, cites it as his favorite film. He talks about it in a very nice, uh, in a very nice way. I mean, if you look at Tourist Trap, there, there, there is, there are these levels of insanity, you know, and it builds and it builds and it builds and it gets to, it gets to, um, what a, a, a level of insanity that's just, I think, really interesting to 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 look at and to to study.